Hello and welcome to week two of Corporate Finance. Uh, looking at this week, just as a reminder, you have your first homework due, the group homework, like we said, was on a lag. Uh, you also have your individual finance paper where you can write on, uh, pick out something with opinionated writing. I mentioned like Lamonica for the buzz, some good topics right now as we kind of talked about the week one forum discussion, and, you know, national debt, even the AT&T and T-Mobile deal might be a good one to write about too, you know, whether uh, federal regulators are correct that it's a bad decision or does AT&T have a case against the feds. So uh, this week we get into time value money calculations. Uh, we start off with chapter four with kind of benchmarking with financial ratios that probably will be familiar to you if you've taken an accounting class. But again, financial ratios have their limitations we use financial ratios to kind of compare performance to how we've done in the past and also to benchmark to other corporations. And then in chapter five is kind of the meat and potatoes this week with uh, time value, money problems. You know, you're gonna look at future value, present value, payment, number of periods and interest rate. As long as we know four out of those five, we can solve for that unknown fifth variable. I posted some videos out there for you to follow to help you with Excel with calculating the time value money problems. Uh, I kind of look at it this way, go through the textbook, read through it slowly. There's three ways to do this. First, just by the formula. And once you get comfortable with the math, you know, maybe you can go to the tables and look at that. And then once you feel familiar with the tables, then use uh, Excel to calculate it. And remember with Excel, it kind of looks at cash flows. From your perspective, it's a negative outflow and in the future, you get a positive cash flow, depending on which side you're on. So invest, for example, if you're investing money, if you invested $1,000, that would be put in Excel as a negative $1,000 for the present value, and you would expect some positive future value in the future. Uh, say, for example, for payments, like a car payment, you were given a loan up front, it's a positive cash flow to you, but you make a series of negative cash flows for perhaps the next 60 months. Chapter six, we look at bonds. Uh, I think remember with bonds, when we deal with these problems, we're gonna keep the par value at $1,000, but bonds have an inverse relationship. That is, as interest rates go up, the price will go down. Or as interest rates drop, the price will go up. So a bond is really, we we're gonna use present value to solve for the price of a bond, because you're discounting back all those potential future cash flows. Uh, another thing to remember with the bonds is that the coupon rate is the actual stated rate. That's how you'll find the payment amount that you'll receive. And that is with, uh, say for example, it was an 8% coupon rate. Well, 1,000 times 8%, it would always be $80 that you would receive. But what can change is the current rate, the market. And the current rate will influence your price of the bond, and also, you know, when we think about buying a bond in the open market, if a bond sells above the $1,000, that's at a premium. If it sells below the $1,000, that's called at a discount. So uh, investors are always gonna look and see what are the relative rates right now. If interest rates have rised and say, they go up to 8%, your bond only has a coupon of 6%, well, an investor is going to be willing to be paying a lot less for that bond in order to give himself or herself a 8% rate of return. Uh, you're also going to deal with uh, the yield of maturity. Uh, we'll use the rate function. And what is the rate of return to that investor by buying that particular bond at that price? Uh, continue to think about working on your team project. Um, also this week, make sure to look at those PowerPoints that are out there. And do send me any uh, emails if you do have any questions. But again, we just have that chapter three. It will kind of always be at a lag. But uh, main thing for this week, especially that individual finance paper, and we will have a, another uh, brief forum discussion. So it was a good discussion out there this past week on the uh, 60 Minutes interview. But uh, this week, I want you to kind of look at uh, how you use time value money and calculations in making decisions in your life or at work. So uh, have a great week, and we'll talk to you soon.